strong brands mean more to people than the product itself. So like if you're a strong brand, the love for your brand transcends the functional benefit of whatever your product is, right? So like I use like fashion is a really easy way for most people to understand brand um, because it's been, it's been around forever and it's purely brand. You know, what's the difference between a $700 Gucci t-shirt and a $20 Target t-shirt? Same functional benefit, same exact material, like cotton, cotton covers your torso so you can go outside. Like functionally, it's the same, but the brand of Gucci is way more valuable and people love it way more than just the functional benefit of what the shirt is made out of or what the function of the shirt is. It goes beyond that. Why do you think they love it? Do you think it's not status? It's social status. It's I, I have enough money to wear Gucci. I am worthy of being a Gucci customer. Why I buy this shirt? For high-end fashion, I think yes. But every brand has different reasons that people are gravitating towards it. But they're almost always emotional and not rational. There's not a rational reason, right, why, why you would buy a Gucci t-shirt over something else if you, in a rational sense. But yeah, for, for Gucci, it is more of a, I would think is more of a status thing to some people, right? I wish you could tell my mother that about Chanel, but um, hopefully yeah. she'll listen. Um, wh- when you sit down in a meeting with the team, what are the reasons why Liquid Death resonates from a brand with the people that buy Liquid Death? I think there's a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different reasons for different people and why they, why they gravitate towards the brand. You know, I think there's folks who, whether they have some amount of alternative background, like, oh, they grew up listening to punk rock music or, you know, and now they're moms or have families or now, I mean, or they're still in bands and it feels like, oh, finally a mass thing that is made by someone or people from our culture of of stuff. Like they just instantly identify with it. Like, oh, this is awesome. This is cool. I've been very familiar with this since I was young. Like, this is great. And then I think you have the people who, it gives them a little piece of rebellion. It's like, if you, for most things that are cool cans to walk around with, like a Pabst Blue Ribbon or, you know, a Monster Energy, if you want to participate in that brand, you have to like drinking cheap beer or you have to like drinking sugary energy with 300 milligrams of caffeine. And not everybody likes that. But when you're water, everybody can drink water. So now all of a sudden, anyone who likes drinking water has permission to kind of be a part of this fun thing. Like I use the example of uh, the motorcycle brand, Harley Davidson. Yeah. Has a very rebellious biker brand to it. But when Harley is doing their marketing, they're not targeting biker gangs. They're marketing to dentists, like people that can afford a $25,000 motorcycle. And yes, they make it feel like it's this biker rebellious thing because the dentist guy who's not a biker wants that little piece of rebellion in his life where he gets to kind of feel like he's, he's not a dentist or whatever, that there's something interesting in it. And I think it's the same thing with liquid death or, or tons of different brands, like even monster. Um, I don't have access to their marketing data, but from folks I know who have worked at monster, or whatever, the core monster customer who buys the most monster are not skateboarders and action sports athletes. And all these people that you see in their marketing, it's, you know, uh, overweight guy outside of Riverside who drives a truck or something like that. And it's marketed to this in this way where that is maybe entertaining to a certain type of person that's not a part of that. And that's enough to make them be into the brand. And like people think, oh, well, Liquid Death, it seems like such a niche thing. Like it's only for a small group of heavy metal guys. But when you back away from beverage and you look at entertainment as a whole, entertainment is way broader. Like if you think about a horror movie, like Jordan Peele, he released a horror movie last summer called Nope that outperformed a Disney Pixar movie. Horror, which is blood, violence, aggression, craziness, all of that, 
that's not a massive summer movie because it's a bunch of heavy metal guys going to the movies. There's all kinds of people that are entertained by that. Soccer moms, dudes, you know, different races, different ages. And I think that's what marketers forget is look at what people are entertained by. Like the biggest genre of entertainment for women is true crime. Shows about serial killers and death and blood is the number one genre for women. But nobody thinks about that from a marketing standpoint of, oh, why would women like liquid death? You know, so. I, I mean, I find that you're totally right. You look at podcast shots, it's all true crime. Did you ever yeah. wire a bizarre, bizarre, by the way? I mean, yeah. no comment. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. Um, did you ever worry, though, about brand alienation? I know I get completely what you're saying, but liquid death it's a great brand because you you feel, or regardless if you like it or you don't like it, but you definitely feel. But did you ever worry about brand alienation, which is like people who otherwise might have liked it might have been put off by it, a skull or the quite hard color schemes that you have? Did you worry about that brand alienation? No. And like, again, to bring back the entertainment thing, it's like the, the same reason that whatever movie studio releases a blockbuster horror movie, like do they worry, how much do they worry about brand alienation? You know, hey, is, is, this, is this kill scene in here gonna like turn off some people who would, you know, really like the movie? It's like on the extreme ends, you have to be careful of that. Like we always, like what we do is not easy, which is why a lot of other people don't do it. It's like, if you go a few degrees this way, it could be very distasteful and you have a problem. If you go a few degrees this way, it's just not funny, it's lame and no one cares. So it is kind of hard to to find that right target where it's provocative enough that you have a ton of people who love it, think it's the greatest thing ever, but you always have a healthy amount of people who are like, how could this be? This is the worst thing ever. Like, I, I always say, it's like, if you, if there are people who truly love something, there has to be people who truly hate it. It is not possible to make something that everybody loves all it's possible is to make something that everybody doesn't really give a shit about one way or the other that's possible where you're just like no one really cares about you they don't love you they don't hate you you're just there you know um that that's really the only option 